Hello everyone, Creative Fun here, back again with another video. And as you see, we are in DCS and we are gonna fly the AV8B Harrier released by Razbam just a couple of weeks ago. Now, I've been flying this uh, quite a lot uh, recently and it's tons of fun. And I wanted to make a quick introduction video to the Harrier where we go through basically how to be awesome very quickly with the Harrier. We are going to do some carrier operations because, to be honest, this was actually the only reason I was initially interested in the Harrier was because you could take off and land from a carrier and do naval operations. So I was very excited when I was able to get my hands on the Harrier. Uh, so uh, let's get started. And as you can see by the uh, title of this video, we are going to have an introduction and go through all the steps required for you to go from not being awesome with the Harrier to be awesome with the Harrier. Uh, we're going to start with actually a cockpit uh, familiarization, so just so we know uh, roughly what we can expect from the cockpit here. So this is going to be like a very basic, uh, start of a very basic tutorial and we'll go on and we're going to be slightly more advanced in each uh, step here. So, first we are going to have a look at the different panels that are available to us. Now this is a fully clickable interactive cockpit. Uh, the Harrier is though still in uh, open alpha, I would say, or early access or, or beta or whatever you want to call it. It's not a finished, fully released product yet. Uh, so there's still some uh, functionality that is not implemented yet uh, in the Harrier. And uh, there might be a few things that will change. As you can see here, I think if we have a look at our very nice sidearm missiles here, the texture is actually missing here as a bug as well. So still a little bit buggy, but very fun to fly all together anyway. so. Let's begin here on uh, the left side of the cockpit. We have uh, basically we have the fuel uh, engine shutoff here, the fuel shutoff valve. We have the digital engine control systems. We have some primary airplane or um, uh, yeah, flight uh, systems. We have uh, exterior lighting. We have fuel panel, throttle quadrant, and the nozzle here. And we also have the additional stabilization system and autopilot system here. Moving further up, we have access to our flaps and gears. So that very good to find know where that is. Uh, looking at the main panel uh, or the front panel of the aircraft, we have starting from left to right here. We have first we have the two multifunction displays. Uh, going down here, we have the weapons panel, which in my opinion is very intuitive. Actually, I was very uh, uh, positively. Uh, surprised when, when starting to learn how this uh, weapons panel works. It's very intuitive and works kind of like how you would expect. So it's very good. Uh, we have the control of the water. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what the water is and how to manage your engines because engine management in the Harrier is actually very important to be able to not crash and die and burn and so on. We have uh, directly in front of us we have um, uh, numpad which uh, manages the navigation and radio controls. We have of course the heads up display. I believe these displays here are for navigation and radio. Uh, I actually don't, I haven't used this too much, I don't quite know, but I, I do believe that's what they're used for. We have an engine management and nozzle management uh, uh, panel here, which is, we're going to go back to a little bit later. Uh, analog flight instruments right here. Fuel instruments right here. Altitude indicator there. If we move our joystick a little bit to the left here, we have a couple of systems uh, related to navigation and uh, sensors, which we're going to use a little bit in just a while. Uh, going down to the right side panel, we have a brake uh, pressure indicator here, a war light warning panel. Uh, we have our, these systems here I don't use very much yet because they're not fully, if I understand correctly, these systems are not like 100% implemented just yet, but it's basically radio and if I understand correctly, IFF systems and navigation systems here, uh, all the way down here. And then we have the interior lighting here, followed by the ECS right here. And we have a nice little yellow lever. We're going to use that later as well when we do the startup procedure. So that's a very, <laughs> quick and half-assed explain introduction to the uh, cockpit. And um, if you read the manual, it goes through this a little bit more thorough. However, since the aircraft is still in early access, things are subject to change. Not all buttons are fully implemented just yet. So I don't feel it's necessary for you to, to understand exactly what every single button does here, uh, because the purpose of this tutorial is to get you up and running quickly. Speed being you know, the, the keyword here. 
Okay, so let's get our Harrier started. Now first, uh, we are actually, we're gonna need some battery power. So we're gonna turn on the battery switch here. We're gonna turn on the generator. Now, uh, a small, let's say disclaimer here. This is my uh, personal startup procedure. I don't know exactly how accurate this is. I intend to fully explore the, the manual and the proper procedures once the Harrier, Harrier is out of um, open uh, beta or early access or whatever you want to call it. But for now, this uh, startup procedure serves me well. Start on battery, uh, generator. Uh, we then move down here. We're going to flick this switch here for the exterior lighting. And this doesn't turn on the exterior lighting, it just enables it. We're going to control it there later. Uh, then we're going to turn on the fuel pumps, like that. And then we're going to start up the APU, there. And depending on how well I do my uh, sound editing, you should be able to hear the APU. If not, you're going to hear a warning light uh, very soon. Oh, there it is. Uh, indicates that we have started up the APU. We're also going to, not the flood jet lights, we're going to turn on the instrument panel lighting here. Console lights there, it looks pretty nice actually. And once the APU is on, we are going to close the canopy and we are going to go through the remainder of my startup procedure. So I just move from the left to the right here in my startup procedure and it works pretty fine for me. So initially we turn on the digital engine control system, we turn on the fuel shutoff valve, turn on the oxygen, turn on the exterior lighting here, turn on the formation lights there. Can switch this to normal night. I believe this is night and normal lighting uh, conditions, so I'm going to switch it to normal. Uh, we're going to move up here. We're not going to do much here, but we can turn on the sta stabilization systems. I don't believe the autopilot is fully implemented yet. I haven't been able to get it to work properly. I'm going to turn on the RPS yaw. Push that on. on. Turn on the flaps and keep them at auto for now. We're going to change that when we take off. Move up to the front panel here, we're going to pull on these uh, brightness knobs here to get the multifunction displays on and we're going to turn on the engine here. Now the engine uh, information uh, panel here gives us some extra bit of information about the engine which is good, we're going to need it for engine management uh, as we fly around. Moving along here, we are also going to turn on the HUD, which we can do here. Uh, I also want to turn on the uh, radar altimeter, because I actually want that to be on. We're also going to move the stick to the left a little bit here. We're going to turn on the flare, set our navigation to nav, and we're also going to turn on the DMT, which is basically the built-in targeting pod in the Harrier. We're going to use that later when we employ the Mavericks. So that's fine uh, for now. Let's see here if I missed anything. Do, 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 do. All right, we need to turn on this knob here, which is the brightness knob for the HUD. So we actually can see the HUD, that's good. And we can turn on the uh, volume, no, sorry, the brightness knob here as well. So we got the display working there. To our right side on our main uh, front panel here, we can turn on the RVR and actually turn up the volume a little bit. Uh, we can turn on our, uh, this is basically the um, countermeasures, expensers dispensers and then we have our uh, ECM which we can actually turn on to standby so that's set up properly. We're also going to click on stores here which give us gives us an indication of what we're actually carrying. Also very nice to know we can see that we're equipped with uh, free Mark 82s, uh, IR Mavericks, the D version and our sidearms. Now the sidearms are very interesting. They are, those are actually seed or anti-radiation -radi missiles and we're going to see if we can use them to take out some uh, SAM sites later in this video. For now we, we don't need to mess with the weapons panel. We're going to do that later when we uh, prepare the ship for combat, uh, prepare this aircraft for combat after we're taken off. Going down here there's not many buttons we need to press here but we do want to press this one down here and that is basically all our systems go. So uh, before we start up the engine I just want to talk a little bit about your key bindings actually because this is very relevant for the Harrier. Um, of course it's relevant for basically every module you're going to fly but there's a couple of things you want to have bound before you start getting awesome with the Harrier. Number one of course the throttle, um, that should be your throttle uh, lever. Um, the joystick and your rudders is of course very necessary as well, as well as the brakes here. In terms of um, 
uh, buttons on my Hotes. I'm going to show you here what I have bound uh, and what I'm going to be using here in this tutorial just to make it a little bit easier for you to also bound them if you're just starting out with a Harrier. Now number one here, uh, you want at least uh, one hat switch to be TDC, uh, uh, let's see, TDC aft, TDC forward, TV, TDC left and TDC uh, right. And then you want one extra button for TDC down, which is basically your action button. So somehow you want to bound these keys. Secondly, you want the uh, dispenser uh, for shaft and flare. You also want a button for the air brake. And uh, for weapons management, especially your targeting pod, your built-in targeting pod and the Maverick, you want the following buttons bound. You want the sensor select forward, sensor select aft, sensor select left, and sensor select right, as well as sensor select down. Uh, so these uh, five buttons you need to bound somehow. I have all these bound to my HOTUS, as we say now, uh, 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 as we speak. And also uh, you want uh, the AG target undesignate and WS FOE toggle button bound as well. So those are the things I bound to my throttle. Uh, for my stick I have bound the cage on cage is also something we need to launch the Maverick. I have also bound the left MPCD OSB 10 button. This allows for quick uh, selecting of your uh, sidewinder or sidearm missile. So I found that pretty useful actually. You're of course going to want the bomb pickle or like the release and launch rockets Mavericks button as well as the trigger and uh, gun uh, launch and sidewinder sidearm launch button. I have for simplicity's sake also bound uh, my landing gears up and down, uh, my master mode for nav and uh, air to ground, the VSTOL I manually click in the uh, cockpit. So we have three master modes here. Uh, it's always default for VSTOL because that's the landing mode basically and then you have nav and air to ground. So nav and air to ground it's nice to be able to quickly switch when, uh, on your HOTAS. Also the flaps mode, uh, and in some cases it's very uh, nice to be able to access those directly on your uh, HOTAS rather than trying to manually push the buttons in your cockpit. I have bound some uh, buttons for the autopilot, but uh, I haven't been able to get it to work properly, probably because I suck, but also maybe because it's not fully implemented yet in this uh, version of uh, the Harrier. So those I have bound as well. I have also bound the parking brake on and off because it, you kind of need to be able to use this and it's very difficult to reach in the cockpit because it's kind of nestled behind your throttle. So I would recommend bounding the, binding, uh, the parking brake as well. Uh, now lastly, I have a slider bound for my nozzle uh, here. Uh, so that's very important that you're able to maneuver the nozzle. It's basically the vect uh, thrust vectoring in the Harrier, which allows it to take off uh, vertically or land vertically as well, uh, and also short takeoff and landing. So you need to have bound this to some keys uh, somewhere. Uh, I prefer to have it on a slider because that means I have more um, control over it, but of course you can bind it to one or two keys, uh, or rather two keys that can make, move it up and down, that's up to you. So that is basically the keys I have bound to be able to operate the Harrier uh, in its current state. So now when we're done with that, let's start the engine. And when you start the engine, the APU goes to off and your HUD should be very like simplified as well as the interior lighting should also turn off. You should hear the engine start and once it reaches 92 RPM, you need to move your throttle forward into idle position here. And uh, I usually move it back to idle uh, to zero. It's very similar to that how you start, for example, I think it's the Vigan or the, Mir the Mirage. So there and there we go we have a full uh, engine started and you kind of want the engine to run as little as possible in this aircraft now one button I haven't bound is the master arm I actually uh, pushes this manually when we go into war so please remember that uh, anyway uh, now we can have a look at the exterior of the Harrier it's a bit noisy but as I move my throttle now you can see I'm moving my thrust vectors here So that's very nice, and you can see the degrees, the thrusts are uh, pointing right here. Uh, corresponds, of course, to the lever there. Now, when we take off and land, we're going to have to use some water uh, to avoid heat damage to the engine. We have a limited amount of uh, waters, water here, so uh, 
we, we don't want to use it uh, necessarily. So as soon as we, uh, usually it's automated, but when we take off, it, it kind of uses a lot of water to avoid damaging the engine and giving us as much thrust as possible. Uh, the one thing and uh, the two things we really need to keep an eye on though in the uh, engine uh, panel here is actually the RPM. Now this is the RPM in percentage with a, an imaginary decimal right here. So it's actually 28.5% uh, uh, RPM right now. Now you want to be below 100 RPM. 100 percent RPM. Now you want to be below 100% RPM most of the time when you operate the Harrier um, because uh, if you go above 100% RPM you are basically um, incurring heat damage to the engine which will diminish your ability to uh, well, uh, conduct uh, multiple sorties. I don't know exactly how accurate it is but uh, from what I experienced if I use the engine uh, too much or rather I push it too hard eventually the thrust will degrade to the point where I cannot perform any uh, short uh, takeoffs or landing uh, making it impossible to land and take off on a carrier. JPT is basically our temperature. Uh, you want to keep this as low as possible at all times. Uh, regular operations should be around 4 500. Uh, when you're doing the landing, it can go very high, up to 7 800. Above 800, you, are, you shouldn't keep it that high for any period of time. So that's it for the engine panel. So we're going to prepare for takeoff now. And takeoff in uh, short takeoff procedure from a carry is actually quite simple. Uh, we first press it, uh, move the throttle down to around, or the nozzle down to around 20 uh, degrees to avoid damaging our um, <coughs> our flaps. We are going to move the flaps position down to a uh, short takeoff. I'm going to make sure that everything looks fine outside here. If the flaps goes down too much uh, compared to the nozzle, uh, there there's a risk that your engine exhaust will damage the nozzles, which is not something we want. So what we're going to do now is going to turn on the water and the engine RPM is actually going to increase a bit and we're going to go full throttle, release our brakes and then just go straight ahead. Once we pass out of the edge we are going to pull our, throttle, our nozzles down to around 60, pull our nose up a bit and uh, start climbing and gaining speed. Once we've gained around, gained about around uh, 100 uh, miles per hour about one between 100 and 150 knots sorry 100 and 150 knots uh, we are going to slowly move the nozzle upwards and uh, move the flaps upwards so that we can begin a complete level flight so let's see if we can take off without any major incident first we're going to turn on the front uh, the water here uh, to um, take off this take off and landing mode you can see the rpm increase there we're going to go full throttle here Ooh. Uh, we also have to remove the parking brake here, see there, and then we go full throttle and we release our brakes. <coughs> we have our hand on the uh, nozzle control because once we pass above the water line here we want to pull it down <coughs> like that. And we want to climb a bit, gear up, gonna go flaps up, we're gonna go nozzle around 20% here and that we are gaining speed quite effectively and then we're going to pull the nozzle back forward here we're going to pull the throttle a bit down and then we're going to switch off the water and we are now flying the Harrier so as you can see in takeoff, uh, short takeoff or carrier takeoff there's quite a few things that happens really quickly and you need to do them quite effectively otherwise you will either damage your engine or crash into the water <coughs> we're going to switch to nav mode now and uh, we don't need this anymore, we're going to go ahead and switch to our navigation here and I press the um, sensor uh, aft switch to get to the uh, navigation here. I can switch among my waypoints here. Be sure to trim out the Harrier as you are um, leveling out the aircraft. I of course recommend that you have bind the trim buttons as well somewhere, either on your keyboard or on your stick. It makes things a little bit easier to maneuver the Harrier. And we can see here we are on auto flaps, that's good. Uh, gears is up, we are in nav mode. What we're gonna do now actually is we're gonna use our Mavericks and engage targets in the Kobolidi Cross. So first we're gonna uh, check out the Mavericks and see how we use them effectively in combat. Uh, number one we need to do is we're gonna have to press on the master arm here. Uh, we are going into air to ground mode. I'm gonna select our Mavericks here 
and you're gonna see here that there's a small indication here that says it's standby. Now it's gonna take about three minutes for the, hair, uh, for the Mavericks to be ready to engage. So we're gonna idle our thumbs a little bit uh, for three minutes. Or rather, if you're lazy, you could idle your thumbs a bit for three minutes. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna designate our targets as the Mavericks heat up. So when the Mavericks are ready to go, we can just turn in on our targets. So let's climb a bit and turn on the DMT. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. And you do that by pressing your sensor off switch twice. So you select it to TV here. We're going to turn on and point our nose towards the target here. I'm going to have a look at how we can use this. Now the DMT works basically as a targeting pod. You um, designate a target of interest and uh, then, well, you look at that target in the display there. So first off, to as you can see here, around our heading indicator we have a small circle. To make the small circle stay, it's basically the camera eye, to make it stay at some point we press our TDC down button and it locks into position. We can now move it with the TDC up, left, uh, off and forward. So we're going to take out some of these targets here. I believe we have a couple of tanks in the edge of this area here which we can shoot at. So let's take, designate one uh, target here so we have that ready. It's great and we can turn around here and keep uh, maneuvering the aircraft out of their weapons range uh, while we wait for our Mavericks to be ready. <coughs> If we move our, uh, let's say, we move our heading away from where the um, camera can no longer look, the uh, TV camera turns off here, but it shows us an indication of where uh, we have our target designated. It also shows here an arrow that indicates a top down view of where we should turn to where we have our target. Uh, I find this uh, very useful actually because that means that you won't lose track of where you're going and where your target is as soon as you have designated it. <coughs> Also, you got the distance to your target here, and that's great, especially since the Maverick has a certain engage range and so on. So keeping your, or depending on your enemies, they could also have an engagement range that you need to be careful of. So keeping an eye on how far you are from your target uh, is also a very good idea. So our Mavericks are now ready. Uh, there's unfortunately no tone or indication as far as I can see that the Mavericks are ready except the little text down here so you have to keep an eye on that but we're going to turn in now and we're going to have a look at how to engage a target with the maverick now the maverick will automatically slew towards the target you have in your uh, with your targeting pod or your dmt as it is called so we're going to turn towards the target here we're about 11 miles out which is fine so we can see the target clearly on the hud that that's nice what we're going to do first now is we're going to press the uncage button that is going to enable the Maverick on the left side here. Uh, we are also going to uh, press the sensor switch uh, back, or no, forward, and select IRMV. So you need to press the sensor switch forward, IRMV here. Uh, so that means that the Maverick is going to be able to lock. And then you're going to have to press the uh, uh, TDC down until you get a lock. And now we have a lock there. Uh, as you can see, the crosshair is much uh, closed in there. And now all we have to do is press the pickle button and off the Maverick go. Now there will be quite a, um, I'd say, a, a, a imbalance in the aircraft once you lost your uh, Maverick missiles. So please remember that and trim it out. And then we can just press the uncage button again and press the sensor switch back. And we are back to our TV screen here. And we I believe we are flying over the target there. Let's see here if we can spot the uh, Maverick hitting its target. I'm sure we're gonna miss that now. Let's turn around here like that. There we go, boom. Perfect. So we're gonna turn into a target now here and I do want to warn you guys a little bit when you're maneuvering the Harrier with uh, uh, in balance. The Mavericks are quite heavy and unless you trim it properly and are a bit careful you can put the Harrier in a situation where you might not be able to recover from a roll. So you need to be quite careful when you maneuver the Harrier uh, when it's in balance and make sure you have trimmed the aircraft properly. You can look at your trim uh, down here. Uh, target designated, uh, press on cage, we have the Maverick there. Press the sensor forward switch to select the ERMV here. And press the um, uh, TDC down until you have a lock, we have a lock. And then press the pickle button and off the Maverick go. And then you once again need to be quite quick and reset your trim so your aircraft doesn't wobble much. 
Now the Maverick is a fantastic uh, piece of weapon because it's uh, fire and forget is very accurate and uh, have a pretty good engagement range so you can be pretty high up and pretty far away from a target and safely engage them. The Harrier can carry four Mavericks, uh, just as many as the Vigan can. However, the real strength in the Harrier comes from its ability to carry a wide variety of weapons and utilize them in the same time, uh, unlike the Vigan, which is basically one weapon, one strike type of aircraft. So the Harrier is much closer to capabilities of the A-10, I would say, than the Vigan, uh, but with a few compromises because this is a much smaller aircraft than the A-10 and have a, a much lower payload. Anyway, we saw our uh, target getting destroyed there, which is great. Uh, we're now going to have a look at our other targeting options. Now we don't really need uh, the um, target designation here or the DMT uh, for this uh, because I know uh, where the target is and I can visually locate them uh, like that. But you can always use DMT to mark out your targets regardless. Um, it doesn't have to be a, a designator for the Maverick only. Uh, but in case of this tutorial I'm going to reset the DMT and I'm going to deactivate it. And then we're going to perform a strike on the center uh, area of the couple of the cross where we have a couple of uh, uh, APCs. Now first and foremost we of course select our weapons by clicking on the button here. We, all the weapons available is right here and we can just click them. If we want the gun we can click the gun as well. But in this case we want the Mark 82s. And the cool thing is that you can select your weapons outside of any panel here. So you can select the gun here, you can select the 82s here if you want to, uh, that's perfectly fine. You can have the gun and the uh, an additional uh, air to ground weapon selected at the same time also because they have separate triggers for the gun and the uh, 82s, so that's also nice to know. And uh, let's move on here. Let's set it, this up for CCIP bombing. And then we move down to the weapons panel here, uh, where, which we control that. Now first we want to be able to release them as CCIP, so we're going to select mode CCIP. That's all good and nice. And we're going to select the fusing option to NT. That means that they're actually going to blow up when they hit the target. That's really nice. Um, we're also going to select, uh, let's see here, NT and then IN for instantaneous. In terms of quantity, uh, we want to... Quantity indicates how many bombs from one rack will be released per button push. Multi means how many racks we're going to be launched. So what we're going to do here to have a symmetrical load as we engage, we're going to have multi set to two, which means we're going to release from two racks, and we're going to select a quantity which mean, of one, which means we're going to select, uh, release one bomb from each rack. You also have the interval here if you want to do like a carpet bombing. Uh, we're not going to do that, but that's where you can set that up. You can also see here that your stores are selected uh, via this panel as well, so you can visually see which stores are selected regardless of if you have this uh, uh, screen up or not. Now once you've set up your bombs uh, in the way you want it to be, uh, or followed my instructions, uh, we can start preparing to line ourselves up for a bombing run. And uh, there's a couple of things I just want to uh, talk about. Usually when I roll in to the target here, I use the TDC down, uh, I put this crosshair on my target, use the TDC down to designate this as a target area. That means that the navigation system will know where I want to bomb. So if I want to do multiple passes, I will have navigation information according to that. At, at, and at the very least, I will have a distance indicator from where I released my bombs and how far I am from that position which can be quite useful. It's not, it's not a necessary step, I think, but um, I find it very useful to do that. Uh, second, you're going to have a very nice little crosshair showing you where the bombs are going to land. And uh, basically what you do is to place that crosshair on your targets and then press the pickle button. Uh, it's not, no more difficult than that. Now, the Harrier is very smooth to fly if it's balanced, so just slowly bring your target over. I'm going to use it TDC down to designate my target area and as you can see the little crosshair here is where the bombs are going to fall so we're going to see if we can place it pickle pickle I release two bombs here and then we pull up and throttle up and we're going to see if we had a hit on anything of that one hit and two hits and I think I managed to get two direct hits on two uh, APCs and I did it at a very decent altitude which means that I was out of their firing range uh, that's really good actually I'm very proud of that we have two more bombs and we're going to definitely drop them uh, on uh, one more target here. Just going to make sure that we're not throttling up too much. 
Uh, one mistake I usually did after a bombing run was that I put the throttle to max and I would overheat the engine quite a lot and I would forget about it. So I would have the throttle way above 100% RPM for several minutes and that is not good. Let's see if we can locate our target visually and I believe it's right there. So we're going to turn slightly here and see we have the pickle button ready. Um, pickle, uh, perhaps a little bit off there. So let's see if we are going to hit our targets. I'm going to throttle up a bit here now. Do, 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 do. And I believe we might, no, I think I got it. Yes, a good hit. So three APCs down. Now we have expended most of our weapons. We still have our wonderfully non-textured sidearms here. We're going to have a look at them in just a, a little bit. But I also want to talk a little bit about the gun here. It's not as amazing as the uh, A-10's uh, well, gun, uh, but it's actually quite powerful. It's very good, and it can if you it can even uh, engage and take out uh, lightly armed and even uh, even some more heavily armed armored uh, vehicles like APCs. So you're actually quite capable of engaging most ground targets with the gun. And it's super simple to use. Uh, as you can see, the gun is selected automatically here. Uh, if you press the gun button one more time, you will select the sidearm or your side winders. So please be aware of that. But basically, what we do, we roll in. Uh, we don't have. We have a slightly less uh, steep curve here. We're gonna zoom in a little bit to line ourselves up with this target here, and we're gonna see if we can just fire off some salvos here. Now, as you get closer, you're gonna have some indications that you are indeed getting closer to your target. And let's see here. Let's just pull this up here and see if we cannot. There we go. And I was actually lying. They changed this in the last update. It was more closer to the um, A10 gun reticle before. Uh, but uh, we were able to tag quite a few targets anyway. I think we even got the APC as well. So even though it was a little bit inaccurate of me telling you that we would get some indication on your target here, could have been because I had a target designator here, I don't know, I reset that now anyway. But uh, we were able to take out quite a few targets with the gun, including the APC here. So that's pretty neat. Now, um, what we're going to do now in this tutorial, which is stretching on a bit, I know, uh, is that we are going to perform a vertical landing on uh, the carrier, we're going to refuel, and then we're going to go back up and we're going to have a look at how to use the sidearm missiles. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch to nav mode. We are going to turn off master arm here. And we are going to throttle back quite a lot so we lose a bit of speed. And let's see if we can line ourselves up with the Tarawa. I'm also going to switch to V-stall or landing mode. And I'm going to pull down the throttle a bit here or the nozzle, I say, I'm going to pull down the nozzle a bit to around 20. Now, landing um, vertically with the Harrier is quite difficult, in the sense that it is, um, you need to have very fine inputs. It, it changes the airplane's characteristics. It's no longer an airplane, it's more like a helicopter. So if you're used to flying with, let's say, one of the DCS helicopters, uh, once you uh, change from uh, level flight to vertical flight uh, or VTOL flight, uh, you will feel very familiar with how to operate the, uh, the aircraft because it operates very much like a helicopter, uh, which in a way is nice. So see, we're coming in here now. We are going to go and switch to uh, take off our uh, STO flaps here, so we have maximum flaps. Uh, we're going to turn on the flaps in landing mode, or sorry, the water in landing mode. We're going to pull down the nozzles here. We're actually going to use the nozzles to maximum reverse here. So we're going to drop the speed quite heavily here, actually. And you can see the aircraft moves up quite easily as well. We're going to be below 100 here, and we're going to switch back to around 60. And we're going to keep moving towards the Tarawa here. Our goal is to hover right next to Taraba and uh, manage our speed. So let's see here now, moving the throttle. So what I do, I play with the nozzle, I play with the throttle, uh, just to make sure that I get a good uh, descent towards the Tarawa, but also uh, a good speed for which we can uh, move into a hover, which is what we need. And uh, well, Keep your eye on the, uh, your descent and climb 
here you can see how many feet per minute you climb and descend that's going to be super important as well as your heading indicator here and uh, right now we're doing pretty good I would say we're coming closer here we're losing altitude in the way we want to lose altitude and our nozzles is uh, I believe in the correct position here we're gonna see if we can so you can also see the degree of the nozzle right here and around 80 83 degrees is what you want to have 81 there so what we're gonna do here we're gonna pull our nose up a bit and see if we cannot uh, come to a hover here as we uh, approaches the Tarawa so let's see here and it just requires a lot of uh, throttle input uh, and then make sure you don't do any rash movements even with the uh, throttle and then once you're in a hover above Tarawa all you do is you wanna move in right next to it and then just glide yourself over the landing way here as you can see it's quite it gets away from you quite easily don't be alarmed and no sudden movements so there we go now it's just a matter of getting her down very safely and secure this looks good and we're down brakes a fairly good landing i would say let's check that's perfectly fine that's a very good landing and unfortunately there's no quick uh uh, way or any shortcuts to getting awesome with landing on a carrier this is just requires practice but the procedure is basically you go in right next to Tarawa you come to hover you kind of slide in over it and then you put yourself down uh, very much like flying a helicopter but there's one uh, big difference compared to uh, flying a helicopter in the static the throttle uh, is a bit uh, how to say it's not as quick to adjust the engine output as uh, a helicopter which means that there's always a delay from when you pull the throttle until you see it actually responding in terms of thrust so that's very important so you kind of need to be one step ahead of whether you need to add thrust or lower thrust uh, so we're down here i'm going to actually turn on the parking brake a little bit here uh, there so we don't roll around and we, are, uh, we do roll around regardless. Let's pull down that and let's see parking brake. Are we rolling? There we go. Uh, still not quite figured out with this just yet. I'm gonna pull up the flaps. Uh, let's see, are we actually gonna cancel the flaps? There. No, I'm sorry. There we go. So that's what I wanted to do. I want just want to put up the flaps there so we don't have them uh, there. And then we're just gonna refuel. And I am just going to carry the sidearms here. Keep the gun on. That's okay. Request Request so we're just going to refuel here and then we're going to take off again. And we're going to head out to... Um, our area of operation with the sidearms. Okay, so we're back up in the air again and we have equipped us with uh, two additional sidearms here. We have uh, uh, filled up our gun pod and uh, we have filled up our tanks as well. Um, 
one thing I forgot to mention uh, before is that the Harrier actually has pretty uh, small fuel tanks, or the engine is quite hungry for fuel, uh, or both probably. Uh, so for longer sorties uh, you might want to consider uh, carrying additional uh, fuel tanks or uh, prepare or plan for multiple sorties where you uh, attack and go back and refuel and go attack again. So of course if you uh, equip yourself with fuel tanks you lose two of your main hard points which means that you can uh, carry even less armament than you already can. So that's also something to uh, take into account. Uh, one of the good things though with the Harrier is since it's a short takeoff and vertical landing, you can take off from smaller road bases and so on fairly easily, which means that you should essentially be able to operate quite close to the combat area uh, compared to let's say the A-10. Now the Viggen of course shares the Harrier's short takeoff capabilities and can also land on road bases, but I do feel the Harrier is capable of doing it a little bit more safely and accurate since it's capable of actually uh, hovering especially during landing. Uh, there is, you are capable of taking off vertically with the Harrier of course as well, but it's rarely used in combat operations because uh, it's just basically too... Uh, you cannot carry full fuel and weapons loadout if you want to take off vertically and you risk uh, damaging the engine if you, uh, doesn't, if you don't get up very quickly and move forward and get into level flight. So you're very much uh, hampered a lot if you try to take off vertically or do combat sorties vertically with vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, that is why uh, the short takeoff is usually employed for combat operations, so you can carry extra fuel or uh, more weapon systems. Anyway, we're heading towards our um, new target area. Uh, I've selected waypoint 3 here and it's giving us indication where to fly with the dash up here or, or the uh, vertical line here, or something, no vertical line and an uh, arrow here. So we're just going to fly towards that now. And there's a couple of um, uh, SAM sites uh, close to Kutaisi, off the Kutaisi Air Base. I believe we have Kutaisi Air Base up here somewhere. And uh, a little bit further ahead from that we have some uh, SAMs uh, with the radar on. So our goal is actually to take those out. Once again I'm going to prepare the aircraft by uh, turning on master arm and switching to air to ground mode. We're actually going to activate by pressing our sensor uh, aft uh, so we can activate the TV here because we're going to want to uh, get our uh, targets visually confirmed first so we can fire in the correct uh, uh, direction. We want to stay at least about uh, 10,000 feet here considering we're going to fight SAMs and any altitude we can have is good. Uh, take an opportunity to make sure that you know how to launch the flares. Uh, we can also turn on the jammer, I believe, with this. I believe the jammer is turned on. I'm not quite sure. I, I don't think I don't know if the jammer is implemented properly, and I might be completely uh, just bullshitting all of you guys now. But I believe that's how you can turn on the jammer. Regardless, we're closing in on our target here, and we are going to have a look with the target sensor and see if we can visually locate uh, our goal here. So it's in the outer airfields. Uh, let's see here, over here. So we're gonna move ourselves over here. So first I believe one of the targets is here and the other is on the other airfield. So I designate it with our TDC down, get a range for it and I'm gonna just uh, move our target. I believe this is the target. So, and I'm also gonna switch on to my uh, um, sidearm, which is this one here. And there we have actually a lock I believe and that's how it sounds when you have a lock. Uh, so what you do is that you press the fire button and launch this missile. Let's see here if it hits or not. We launched pretty high up. You can see we have the RVR here shows us. Uh, we have some radar signatures here. But we're gonna see if the first missile does hit. If not, we're gonna have to go in and fire one more. Now, designating your target with the uh, uh, DMT is not... Um, it doesn't align uh, the missile or anything like that. What it does though is just give you an indication of where you should fire. Uh, it works very much like the Sidewander, uh, but it picks up on a radar signature instead of an infrared signature. And once it picks up on a radar signature, you just fire it and it will try to home in on that signal. Uh, since we know the target is right here, we're gonna see if we can turn in towards it one more time. Hopefully we won't get a missile after us. If we die now, uh, that's totally fine, uh, because it's not real life, so I won't die in real life, which is good. Let's see here if we can get a signal. 
no signal yet. We know there's another target over here, so we're gonna see if we can get a signal. Nothing yet. Fire. And then we are going to move away. Deselect that one. We are down to one more missile here now. Let's hope I'm gonna release some shaft. Not that I think that's gonna help if they launch at us. Let's see if we can get a hit. Boom, I direct hit one more time. Let's see if that did a job. We see some smoke going up there, uh, but I don't see any more smoke coming from the target. We might not have killed it just yet. It's too bad. We have one more missile, so I'm going to try one more uh, missile at that, and then let's hope that's enough. So I'm going to activate it again. Turn around. Because we definitely had a direct hit. It might be a bug that's making them not work. Uh, but that's okay. Okay, we're definitely being locked up by them on there, so I'm just gonna fire one and then I'm gonna move away. As you can see, there's still no smoke coming from them, so there might be some bug with the sidearm right now in this version. I'm still on the open beta. Um, but we definitely hit our target. We saw it twice that it exploded right where the target is. So I would say at least if it had worked properly, that would, be a, would have been a successful hit. This has been a quick introduction how to get awesome with the Harrier quickly. I've gone through the, the, some of the basic weapon systems uh, for the Harrier and we have also looked at uh, short takeoff and vertical landing uh, to at least some degree of success here. So thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope to see you guys in the, the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter and if you have any questions or uh, suggestions on how I can improve my own uh, skills with the Harrier, please leave a comment down below. Uh, once again, thank you so much for watching.